Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and we are back with another exciting tutorial and in this video we are going to see about Apache Kafka where we will go through some theoretical components, contents of Apache Kafka, how it works and then we will see a demo on how to set up the Apache Kafka in the simplest way. Okay. So to get started with on this discussion on this tutorial, we will start with what is Apache Kafka. And uh, we will also see how Apache Kafka is used in different cases. What are the components uh, in the Apache Kafka? The different terminologies we you should know, and how to set up it. Okay. So to start with uh, Apache Kafka, it's an open source distributed event streaming platform. So I hope you you guys may be aware about the uh, stream you know event streaming uh, platform or what do you mean by that? But if you don't know, we will touch up to on that also. Okay. And uh, what 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 is the use case of like you know to event streaming you it is used for high performance data pipelines and also streaming analytics data integration mission critical application so there are different use cases of apache kafka and you can uh, have a google tour or you can go through the documentation for apache kafka and you will see different use cases how it's used okay and uh, what do you mean by event streaming so because when when we say apache kafka is used as an event streaming platform you may have a question what do you mean by event streaming so to simplify you know it's 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 more like you know our uh, nervous system in uh, human body like you know it's receives a capture some data in real time like even streaming is a practice of capturing data in real time from different sources uh, like databases sensors mobile devices cloud services or any other software application so as I mentioned, like it's like uh, our nervous system where we will see around and we will capture different uh, things like what you see, what you hear, you know, uh, what you run, what you do, actions, and everything you're capturing in in your system, right? And what we do uh, after that, we store those events uh, and uh, durably for later retrieval, right? When you see something, you capture it in mind, or you hear something and you may want to retrieve it later. So the same way, these events are stored and you want to uh, later retrieve it or manipulate it or process you know you have to process those information which you receive and you want to send it back to someone right and reacting to those uh, streaming events in real time as well as maybe you know a later point of time and you want to route these events stream to a different destination uh, or different uh, technologies as needed that's the overall concept of event streaming so this is a really uh, great application and it's been used for different use cases. And uh, let's talk about how Kafka works in simple terms. So uh, in general, Kafka is like a distributed system consisting of servers and clients. Okay, And these are communicating each other. And these communication are through a high performance uh, network protocol. And uh, the servers, the clients, you know, it's like a distributed system where in this video we will touch upon uh, how to simplify it and run it in a uh, one machine where you have uh, the main server, the zookeeper sending the, you know, the uh, topics and everything. Okay. So, uh, and why it's, it's, it's used for high performance data pipeline, 3D analysis and data integration, mission critical application, which we already uh, talk about, like, you know, how Kafka works. And uh, there are see there are some key concepts and technologies or terminologies which you need to understand when uh, when we say about how Kafka works. Uh, it's uh, mainly there are the term called event because we said it's an event streaming uh, application, right, or platform. So what do you mean by event? Event means like you know it records that something has happened. So any event event is you know uh, it's a record of something happened in the software or anywhere in the applications which will be captured in the Kafka or oh, that's what I call event and there is a concept called producers so any uh, any client application uh, that publish or the events to the Kafka so uh, event is something which happens and there's some, there should be somebody who write into Kafka right so these are called producers so those applications or the clients uh, which write these events into Kafka are called producers and there is also called consumers and once uh, when we say like these events are produced by someone and stored in Kafka, there should be also somebody who consume it, right? So these are uh, the those who subscribe uh, to these events and they want to read and process these events. So they are called consumers. And there is also called topics, uh, terminology called topic. And when you say the events are captured and these events are organized and duly stored in into topics. 
So similar to like, you know, in a, a file structure, you have folders, you have files, you have subfolders. So the same way the events are organized in different structure called topics. Uh, so you will see uh, more about this when we go further tutorials, but this is to have an introduction of uh, what these terminologies and there's also called partition and these topics are partitioned and means, you know, these are spread over into number of buckets. So you know, all these uh, events which we capture as topics, which are partitioned and split up into different, you know, uh, as different buckets and it's spread over on different uh, places okay so that's the overall concept of uh, partition i will uh, link this uh, website or documentation into the video description so you can go through it so you can see the complete details of you know it's uh, used by more than 80 percentage of fortune hardware companies and the trust they use for kafka and you know it's used across manufacturing banks insurance telecoms you know and there are different uh, capabilities of kafka like about throughput scalable storage high availability you know built-in processing uh, client libraries a larger ecosystem with open source tools and it can be used for mission control and you know, thousands of organizations so uh, there are quite a lot of information and also about the documentation where you can see about you know what are the uh, use cases of uh, you know, streamings like to process payments, financial transactions, stock market, you know, to track uh, truck monitor, you know, or also to capture sensor data for IoT devices, to collect customer interactions such as retail, re you know, or monitoring patients uh, in the hospital, predict changes, ensure, and you know, to different use cases of uh, Kafka. And you can also see, you know, the different architecture where you have to store, you know, there are producers, you know, different producers, there are consumers and how the, it's stored like different topics which are partitioned. So all these kind of things, you can go through it and different kind of uh, information. So uh, this, this is, I will link all these things and we can go through it in depth uh, into, into the next tutorial. But in this tutorial, we're going to touch upon how to set up a Kafka instance. So before we move forward on setting up the Kafka instance, uh, I will ask you like if you are new to my channel or if you are not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button, like my videos, share and uh, give your feedback in the comment section. So let's get started with the actual demo. If you go to the Apache documentation site, you can see the complete details on uh, Apache Kafka. So you can go through it so you can see the diagram how the apache kafka works and how the data is transferred how the topics are created so we'll, we'll see all those things in the later tutorial so the basic uh, structure uh, kafka can be run in a cluster but here we'll be running a simple a single node uh, kafka To start, I'm using a CentOS 7 machine. If you have uh, other machines, so you'll have to follow the steps for that. So the basic requirement to start the Kafka is uh, Java. So in my machine, Java is not available. You can run the command Java version to see whether you have Java installed. So let's install Java first. So I'll be using uh, the installation of uh, OpenJDK. So you can run this command to install uh, OpenJDK. Okay, so the Java installation is completed. We can check the Java version using the command java-version. So you can see the version is listed now. So before uh, we proceed to the next phase, so Java home uh, it has to be set. If you see currently, the Java home parameter is not uh, showing correctly. So let's make the changes for uh, Java home path and path variable first. So you can run the command alternative config Java to see what the version of Java install. Okay, and you can see also the location where java is installed so we will use this location to set the java home variable and also the path variable so let's use the file dot bash rc file so we will edit this file and we will add the uh, home 
Java Home and uh, Path Variable. So I'm using the VI editor. If you have uh, other editors, you can use that. So we'll use the command export. And let's uh, set Java Home to the location. And also we will set the path variable. Okay, let's save the file. We need to source the bash RC file to make these changes effective. So let's run the source command. If we run the echo for Java home again, we are able to get the path correctly. That means uh, the settings are effective. Okay, the next step is to download the Apache Kafka. So to download, we need to use wget. So since uh, I don't have wget installed, let's install wget first. Okay, the installation of wget is completed. Now we can download the Apache Kafka. So if you go to the documentation for Apache Kafka, you have the link to download. You can go to the location and you can get the link to download the Apache Kafka. So let's copy the link and use the wget to download the dgz file. Okay, the download is completed. So if you list, you can see the compressed file. Let's untar it. Okay, let's uh, check the folder. So we have a new folder for Kafka. Let's go inside. And if you see, we have folders like bin, config, and other files. So if you go to the bin location, you will be able to see a different shell files. So these uh, files we will be using to start the servers. So like a, a Kafka server, we will be also using like Zookeeper server. If we run the command Kafka, topics.shell file you can see it's listing a lot of commands we will see more about this in the upcoming tutorials so just to show that kafka is running fine so before we start the kafka server let's edit the bash rc file once more so this time we want to add the kafka path variable So again, we will use the export and the path location is the root location where I have extracted the folder. In your case, it may be different, so change it accordingly. So save the file and source the bash rc once again. Usually in uh, Kafka, we will use Zookeeper. So we need to install Zookeeper, but in this case, we will use the default uh, Zookeeper server. Maybe in the next tutorial, we will see how we can have a separate Zookeeper instance installed. So if you go to the bin, you will be able to see the Zookeeper uh, server and uh, go to the config folder and you will have uh, configuration files for Zookeeper and the uh, server properties. So we'll be using 
a lot of these uh, shell commands and also the properties in the tutorials. Okay, now let's start the zookeeper. So you have to go to the location bin zookeeper server start dot shell file. You have to call this one and you have to map it to the configuration file. So it should be config slash zookeeper dot properties. So you can see the zookeeper is running now. We will create another shell to the CentOS machine where we can uh, run uh, the Kafka instance as well. So here again, we have to go to bin and we have to use the Kafka server start dot shell command and we have to map to the configuration under the config folder so config slash server properties I have given all these uh, commands in the video description so you can just copy and paste the commands from the video description You can see that the Kafka server is also started now. So we have both the Zookeeper and Kafka running. So I have one more shell connected to the same server. So the next step is uh, we can try to create some topic. So follow these instructions as you see on the screen. So we are calling the Kafka topic dot shell command here and we are uh, mapping to the my own host machine which is uh, 192.168.145.140. So I have to change the IP address. Now currently we are not uh, inside the Kafka folder. So we have to go inside the Kafka folder where the bin and uh, the config uh, folders are available and we are going to use the port 9092 and the replication and the partition as uh, number one and if you see the topic I have given a name as uh, test you can give any name let's run the command and you can see the message like topic is created now let's see how we can see the topic. So we are going to use another command to list the topics. So again, we are going to call the Kafka topics dot shell command and the list. You can see now the test is listed here. We can test one more topic. So let's create a new topic. Again, you can give any name. So I have given a new topic as the name. So you can see we have got the message like create a new topic. So let's run the command to list the topics again. So this time you can see we have two topics. One is new topic and the test. Okay, in this tutorial we will stop here. So in the upcoming tutorial we will see how to install a separate zookeeper. And also we will see more about topics and uh, consumers, producers, so how the messaging happens between uh, the two uh, nodes i hope you like this video and uh, thank you for watching if you're new to my channel or if you're not subscribed to my channel click on the subscribe button like my video share your feedback in the comment sections and i'll uh, see you next time with the interesting other tutorial